Hello everyone and welcome to a short course on enterprise architecture. So, what exactly is enterprise architecture? While it has many definitions, enterprise architecture is essentially a practice of comprehensively dissecting and understanding the inner workings of an organization. It also serves as a blueprint or roadmap in understanding the structure and operation of an organization. It is important to consider EA and Enterprise Transformation as separate entities, but EA is a facilitator of transformation. This is because they generally utilize the same methodology and best practices, so EA can be seen as a means to ET. While ET ultimately affects the people, technology, and organizations as a whole, EA only affects the IT infrastructure within the company, which typically comprises 5-10% to 10 of its resources. Similar to the principles of traditional architecture, enterprise architecture has identified four crucial pillars within the organization. The first pillar is the business aspect, which considers the processes and standards by which the organization conducts its daily operations. The second is the application aspect, which examines how effectively the organization is able to follow through on those processes and standards. Third is the technology architecture that the organization possesses in its arsenal. This could be the hardware, operating systems or networking solutions, just to name a few examples. And last but not least, the information systems architecture within the organization, which collects, stores and then identifies the raw data that the organization needs to operate at a higher efficiency. Examples of raw data include databases and spreadsheets. Practitioners of enterprise architecture are also known as enterprise architects. They are usually experts in IT management and systems thinking, also known as the ability to see the big picture. And they usually report to the chief information officer or CIO of the company. Their job is to interpret the information on the business structure and processes, and later on provide advice on how the organization can ultimately achieve the goals of enterprise architecture, which are to improve the effectiveness, efficiency, agility, and durability of the company. During an enterprise transformation, the architects would strive to understand the gaps between the present state and the next major stage of evolution within the company also called the future state. They can do this via two methods, namely the target first or baseline first method. If the future state is still undefined, practitioners can utilize the baseline first method, which means to devise appropriate strategies first that will bring the present state to a likely future state. Conversely, the target first method means to envision what the ideal future state of the company would be, then work backwards to the present baseline state. As we have learned in class, enterprise transformation applies within and across the four pillars of business, hence taking an iterative approach is necessary. This is because certain business processes are duplicated in various departments within the organization and may involve multiple parties from project managers to stakeholders. This is where taking an iterative approach affords the enterprise architect the ability to maneuver between the development of the four pillars easily, even if one is incomplete, then come back to the unfinished one at a later stage when there are more data or resources. This is a diagram of a typical process of enterprise architecture, and it bears close resemblance to the process of business transformation management. They both require the proponents of change to consider the big picture first so that they can create specific directions in order to bring about that change. From what we have learned, the underlying objective of undertaking enterprise architecture is to better align both the IT and business strategies such that they can enable and support each other simultaneously. Once there is a streamlined focus in the organization, there could be lower operational costs and improve information management. Situations of silo mentality would be reduced. The benefits of undertaking EA can manifest in other areas as well. In the management of project portfolio, 
Having an EA allows for quicker decision making and work prioritization. The organization will also become more adaptable to the constantly changing market conditions and demands. Those processes which are inefficient or redundant will be eliminated. And those remaining ones which are crucial could be consolidated, reused, and integrated across all aspects of the business. These are just some examples of the benefits of undertaking enterprise architecture. We have come to the end of this short course. For further reading, please refer to this paper.